All right, just a couple of short topics I want to address now. Uh, we'll talk about indicators today. And an asset base indicator is actually two entities that we use the same name for. Uh, it's a weak asset and base conjugate pair. Okay, so an indicator, it has a symbol, which is usually a combination of two letters with H in front of it. Sounds confusing, but I'll show you why. So bromothymol blue looks like this. You write it as HBB, BB for bromothymol blue. H, because it's actually a weak acid, okay? So bromothymol blue is actually an equilibrium system that looks like this. Ionizes partially in water, very weak acid, so just a small amount of hydronium present, all right? But check out what happens. So Le Chatelier is back a little bit. So if you have bromothymol blue in the presence of hydronium, the shift is gonna be the left, it's gonna produce more of this stuff, which is yellow. So that's why the bromothymol blue appears yellow in an acid. Similarly, if you add hydroxide, it'll remove some hydronium. The system will respond to produce more. By doing so, it makes more of this blue stuff. Okay, so the HBB is yellow, the conjugate base is blue, and whatever side of the equilibrium it's on, that'll be the color it shows. All right, now there are lots of indicators. They're all acid-base pairs, and they all have different strengths. That's why their color changes occur at different pHs, okay? Now, what's important when using an indicator is that you only use a little bit, and that's not just to save it. It's because something happens when you have a large amount of a weak acid-base conjugate pair, okay? That's what I'm gonna talk about next. So, if you have a large quantity of a weak acid-base pair, it's called a buffer solution, okay? This is pretty interesting. So now let me talk about buffer solutions a little bit. So I want you to consider a weak acid. I've chosen hydrofluoric acid. Okay, so weak acid means it does not ionize quantitatively. So a solution of hydrofluoric acid is actually an acid-base pair, okay, in different concentrations, um, some hydronium, water, all right? Okay, so if we react this weak acid with a strong base, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so you're adding hydroxide, there's a proton transfer, you get more fluoride, get some water, forget about the water. Okay, so we're adding fluoride and we're taking away HF. So let's talk about the uh, equilibrium system. Fluoride goes up. That's going to cause a shift to the left. And actually, the HF, the hydrofluoric acid, goes down, which will also cause a shift to the left. Okay, so by reacting some of this stuff with hydroxide, you're getting two stresses to the equilibrium that both shift it to the left. That produces more of the hydrofluoric acid. You'll never get as much back as you lost, but you get almost all of it. That's what makes this a buffer solution, is even if you add a strong base to this, as long as you don't add enough to overwhelm the equilibrium system, the pH hardly changes because adding the strong base produces the stress to the equilibrium, increasing fluoride, decreasing HF. Both of those stresses shift equilibrium left, producing more of this stuff. Okay, so what you need to know about a buffer solution. They contain, they contain weak acid-base pairs in large amounts, okay, and they resist changes to pH when other acids or bases are added, and it's because of Le Chatelier. Okay, so just have a look at this, and I hope you can wrap your head around it. I'll go over it one more time. This is what a sample of hydrofluoric acid is. It's an acid-base equilibrium system. If you add a strong base, the HF is removed, producing more fluoride. Removing HF shifts equilibrium left. Producing fluoride shifts equilibrium left. So this system is very uh, durable. It's going to resist this strong base changing its pH a great deal.